Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podman, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Stitcher, Double Twist. Thank you always for downloading and listening to this show. Great pleasure to be back on board once again today to talk about hockey. There's hockey going on, but unfortunately, no games to review and maybe, hopefully, one game to preview, I guess. It's a start, and, well, yeah, got to start somewhere. Might be able to preview the Los Angeles Kings, so this should be a two-segment show. Two-segment show. Basically, I'll do a, I'll preview the LA Kings, which is like, we played them like 50 times already this year, but supposedly that's our next game on Tuesday, and then next week's show, we'd preview games after that, which would be Anaheim, Anaheim, and then, oh, oh, wow, and then, and then a bye week. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, lots of lots of wild hockey going on. Well, then again, a lot of other teams are playing, though some are also suspended. Looks like uh, Arizona and St. Louis are playing each other eight or was it six? No, seven consecutive games. That's pretty funny. So almost their whole annual schedule <laughs> will be played right away. Vegas missed games earlier in the year. They're still playing great, leading our division. Uh, Colorado's got eleven games in hand. Minnesota eleven games in hand, but we're going to fall way behind in that case. So, uh, or eleven games total. So we'll have mini games in hand to catch up. That's why our standings are bad right now because just haven't played enough games. We'll see. Everybody's going to miss games probably. We'll see if the games are postponed or are canceled or what the heck. But uh, we didn't get to play the Blues at all, unfortunately. We. Uh, we're unable to play the last Colorado game, and of course the Arizona Coyotes, a team we might be fighting for the postseason. We shall see. St. Louis and Anaheim so far are leading the uh, division in games played. So, that's, I guess, nice and everything. Uh, should we preview the LA Kings? We've only played them like 15 times already this year, so uh, it kind of is what it is. You know, Dustin Brown, Jonathan Quick, this guy, that guy. It's kind of the same old thing. Uh, seriously, we've actually played them a thousand times. So, uh, yay, you know, we're just going to play them again. Look at the matchup. So we played them officially four times, I guess, and we had one postponed. So far, the Wild are 3-1 and one versus the Kings, which is a good thing. Hopefully, we do get to play on the 16th. It was originally going to be February 11th, but two more games were canceled. So that's why there's, you know, only one game to preview instead of three, that type of deal. So... Yeah, it is what it is. Kings have lost all of their last five games, including to Minnesota in our most recent game, basically. Five to three. They lost to Anaheim Ducks. Uh, most recent game against each other, anyway. That was the game where uh, <laughs> poor Walker got hit in the face. And, of course, Roy got messed up in his face from uh, Kevin Fiala, who was suspended three games. And Well, luckily, those games all were played, so Fiala was going to return, and, well, it didn't happen. Anaheim Ducks, they lost three to one. And they got swept by Vegas 5-2 to and 4-3. to Those were enjoyable games. And the Kings most recently lost to San Jose. So, of course, staying in that southwest region there. Minnesota, zero games. Postponed, 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 postponed. You get the idea. <laughs> yeah, we were postponed a lot of games so far. So, it was going to be three. Now it's going to be five. And it's just, well, <laughs> what more is there to say? We're just postponed, I guess. And hopefully we'll get to play the Kings again. That would be nice. Jonathan Quick has not had a good season so far, especially against the Minnesota Wild. We've pretty much shelled him, or Kelvin Peterson got the victory versus Minnesota. Don't be surprised if Peterson's in there, but maybe it's just some kind of thing with Jonathan Quick where we got to let him play, damn it. I, I don't know, or they're tanking or what the heck, but Peterson actually has now been in more games than Quick. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things where maybe it's time to 
time to move on or whatever. A quick is just the backup. Anze Kopitar, the leading scorer and still the best player with the Kings. Dustin Brown, 11 points. He actually, he's actually the leading goal scorer, where Kopitar's got 12 assists for 15 total points. They follow, or EA follow, excuse me. Guys like that. Roy, unfortunately, we'll see what happens with him. And Sean Wagner had to have some surgeries on his face after getting hit. Obviously, the young defenseman for the Los Angeles Kings. It's just how it goes. You know, hopefully these guys recover nicely. We, we apologize for the mean, uh, mean, bloody game there. That 5-3 to three win for Minnesota. But nice to get the win. But we apologize for what happened. Uh, on behalf of the Wild, I apologize. On behalf of Kevin Fiala and Matt Dumba. Apparently, though, good news for Michael Russo. Last Saturday on Beyond the Pond, not pod, but pond. Obviously, I love Beyond the Pod as well. That's like the off-season podcast with uh, Mr. Molesky, Brandon Molesky, and Pat McAlady and occasional guests and all that. You know, I'll, I'll, oftentimes they do have a guest, like a Bob Moscow or who knows, a wild player. Who knows? Uh, even Bill Garrett might pop on. Guys like that. But uh, no, uh, Michael Russo popped on the show last week because I keep saying popped on, I guess. I guess I have that on my mind for some reason. <laughs> he uh, came on and said that the uh, Matt Dumba injury is not nearly as severe as it sounds. So that's really good news. So Dumba may return soon. It looked like, you know, it looked like, uh, well, you know, let's not say Teddy Bridgewater, but like an Adrian Peterson or something. ACL, MCL, and we'll see you in a year or two, that kind of thing. Uh, but no, that's not the case. It's not as severe as they say. It's obviously a knee injury, maybe a sprain or a strain or something like that. But it's going to be okay, despite the uh, nasty twists and turns of that knee. He'll be returning this season and not too long from now. Maybe after this postponement due to COVID-19. Apparently nine players have officially contracted COVID-19. Hopefully it's not as hard on them as Carl Anthony Towns, apparently with the Timberwolves. He didn't come back for a long time and I guess he has an underlying issue. So, man, he, he said it himself in a tweet. We'll talk about that tomorrow on Timberwolves' explosion. Russo described the uh, conditions of the players from not so bad to at least one or two of them talking about uh, feeling like they'd been hit by a truck. Others kind of dizzy, tired, this type of thing. So everybody feels different. Everybody's got different levels of immunity for what reason or whatever. Other weaknesses, other medical conditions, this and that. Keep taking those vitamins, that's all I can say, I guess. You know, zinc, you know, things like that. Zinc is a big one, obviously. And, of course, that was really hard to find for a while, but luckily it's becoming more and more available for many people out there, Amazon and places like that. And Target, it just kind of disappears off the shelf. But maybe that's not the best quality one out there. <sighs> well, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> hoping for the best for all these guys. I don't want to hear any talk about the season being canceled. I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, they talked about that with baseball and like the St. Louis Cardinals didn't play forever, that kind of thing. They were gone for weeks. It was crazy. And then they came back and, well, you had a world champion. You had the Dodgers beating the uh, Tampa Rays. That's the only championship the Ra uh, Tampa lost this year. The time congratulations to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Tampa Bay Lightning in the NHL, of course. Uh, so we'll get through it, hopefully, for the best. It's crazy how during the uh, <laughs> during the the bubble during the off season it was completely like there was nothing. You know, there was no there was no COVID. That was nice. Ah, things rolling, but it is what it is. Teams travel and people get sick and this and that. <sighs> to me, it's just kind of the way it goes. Unfortunately, it's like uh, there's a bug going around that kind of thing. And hopefully, again, the guys can uh, get through this okay. We'll get back playing again and. We'll have a Stanley Cup champion, and the Wild are hopefully the ones that are holding the trophy at the end of the year. <laughs> the odds of that are very slim. All kinds of possible trade talks, possible trades, this and that. Montreal Canadiens, Calgary Flames, Sam Bennett's available, guys like that. Ah, oh, it didn't work. That sucks. I was trying to get Calgary up, but <laughs> that's how that goes. Of course, we're going to talk about the prospects in the same segment, and then we will just jump right into fan interaction in segment number two. It's kind of like an off-season show, because we're kind of off right now. And here we go. Thank God for the pause button because I got to cough on occasion. <laughs> Jacob Markstrom. Yep, Calgary Flames. I wish we got to play the Calgary Flames this year, especially if David Riddich is in that. We might actually win because Riddich is just not that good. Markstrom's been pretty good. Calgary's struggled, generally speaking. They score goals. They give up goals. They, they're inconsistent. They're cold. They're hot. They're this. They're that. And a guy that's been kind of cold most of his career and he's basically demanding a trade. I guess it's because he's a fourth overall pick in 2014. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how's the play been for Sam Bennett? He's been a bust. He's been a bust. He's got skills. He's got ability, but hasn't translated, really. He did score 18 goals in 15-16. 13 goals 
16, 17, 11 goals in 17, 18, da, da, da. 13 goals again in 18, 19. That's not too long ago. And then last year in the postseason, he had five goals, eight points in 10 games. If he can play like that, it's a pretty good player. Uh, looks to be a second or third line center. He's pretty much been, you know, bottom six most of his run in Calgary. And he's, he's tired of it, this and that. <sighs> What would he be with Minnesota? He'd have to be second line right now. You know, if you have Drew Lyrics and Eck as like the top line or second line. Sam Bennett, could you imagine him as your top line center? I don't know, maybe he'd do something with Minnesota. What would they expect? Uh, one trade idea was brought up by Declan Goff on the Judd's Hockey Show. Uh, was possibly like a Marcus Johansson and a fourth round pick. I mean, I wouldn't be against that at all. And, you know, Calgary would get a veteran winger. They'd get rid of Sam Bennett. They'd even get a fourth round pick. Something like that. I wouldn't be against that. You get to kind of rent a player. And then, of course, uh, Sam Bennett is also kind of a rent a player. He's a restricted free agent. And if he performs well, you know, you keep him. To, you probably sign him to like a, a bridge contract like you did with Mikhail Granlin a few years ago. Uh, like a three year deal, bridge contract. Like, go, let's go. Let's see what you can do. You're not going to get some six, $6.5 million a year or something. You're not going to get a Dumba contract or anything like that moving forward. The good news is if there was a possible trade with Matt Dumba on the horizon in the next month or two, something like that, whenever the trade deadline is. <laughs> Obviously, it shouldn't be too far away, about a month from now, uh, if there, or in the summer, something like that. It's possible now, because he's not over the season. He doesn't have a devastating injury that could mess up his career, that type of thing. But Sam Bennett, hey, you know, it, it's a name, it's a possibility. We'll see. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if the Wild makes some kind of move, somebody like a... Marcus Johansson, somebody like a Bonino, a draft pick, this kind of thing. A team looking for a veteran and the other team's maybe giving up on a young guy. That kind of thing. And we're trying to give the guy a chance, give him a flyer. See what happens. Kind of like we did with uh, Alex Galchenyuk. At least I'm saying his name correctly. Another name brought up by Declan. Or actually, was this uh, This was Judd. The tough, the toughest name ever. He's actually a Finnish guy, but it sounds like it could be he could be from anywhere. Jesperi... Cut Kanemi, Kanemi, yeah, yeah. Cut, cut Kanemi, cut Kanemi. Yeah, that's not that hard. If you just sound it out, cut Kanemi. Uh, maybe. Cut Kanemi. Yep. Um, one goal so far, six assists. He was a top six guy, of course, and he's a very high draft pick, like a Sam Bennett. He's been dropped down to the third line lately for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. So. <laughs> from Montreal, he's from Finland, very young, very, very young, born on July 6, 2000. Productive rookie season in 19, uh, 18, 19. Again, he was a, what was he, the third pick in the draft? Yeah, in 2018, seems like, not like yesterday. Sheesh, it was after the Washington Capitals won the cup over Vegas, damn it, I wasn't too happy about that. 11 goals, 23 assists in that year, and then in the, this, uh, then the past year, only eight points dropped down, kind of been Invisible. Seven points so far this year in 13 games. Six of them assists. Yeah, maybe they're giving up on him because other guys moved up. And look how good Montreal's been this year. I mean, they're beating everybody. Sure, they lost to Toronto yesterday, but they're still rolling. And those two teams are ruling the North Division. And, well, good for them. I mean, they're the most classic teams in NHL history. Love them or hate them. Maybe, you know, like back in the day, people probably got tired of Canada and Montreal ruling the league way, 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 way back in the day. But it's been a long time been a long time, especially for Toronto. Uh, Montreal was winning cups in the 70s. You know, 1986 and 93, they got a couple more when Edmonton and teams like that, Edmonton, New York Islanders, you know, teams like that back in the 80s were ruling the roost. Montreal's been outstanding. Carey Price has been decent. Jake Allen's been really good, just like he was last year as a backup, or two years ago as a, no, last year as a backup for uh, Jake Bennington. Obviously, Bennington took over and won the Cup, and then the next year, Bennington, not so good. Jeff Petri, Toffoli, uh, Toffoli, excuse me, uh, leading the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Toffoli with nine goals. Josh Anderson with nine goals, only two assists. He's going Jason Zucker on it right there, right now. Jonathan Drew and guys like that. It's guys like Suzuki, Petri, Toffoli that are kind of leading the way, and they again shoved Kotkaniemi uh, downward. <clears throat> into the bottom six, and we'll see. We'll see if they're willing to give up something. We're going to go up a little more probably in that one, like a uh, Greenway in a draft pick, or just, just Greenway. Who knows? Like young guy for young guy. See what happens. <clears throat> it would have to be something, uh, either a, a higher draft pick or a Greenway. 
Probably not both. Maybe it would be a lower pick if you trade away Greenway. <clears throat> Try to capitalize, strike while the iron's hot if you're not convinced Greenway's got a, a great future going forward. If you had to trade either Jewel Erickson Eck or Jordan Greenway, I think it's got to be Greenway. I mean, Jewel Erickson Eck has proven himself as an elite defender. Uh, if, if established players get extremely frustrated with Jewel Erickson Eck on a regular basis, he's doing something right. So, <clears throat> obviously, there's something there. And now you're seeing a scoring touch, you're seeing a little bit of everything. We'll see. Greenway's physicality has definitely improved in a big way. So that's another reason to keep him. But, hey, if you could get a, a center that might have a future in this league, take a flyer on the guy. Hopefully there's something there. And there should be, as a third overall pick, there should be something there still. It's just other guys emerge, and I think uh, J.K., we'll call him, <laughs> deserves more ice time and more opportunities to play on the power play that's in that second power play unit. He wouldn't be on the top power play unit right out of the gate. No, no chance. Uh, well, that Jewel have a shot at that one. Get some more points, more assists to lead the Minnesota Wild in scoring, which is basically what he can do right now. Pretty damn cool to finally see that happening. <clears throat> Still got a great future for him. Uh, so possible trade ideas. Obviously, you know Barkov way, way, way up there, way up there. You'll be giving up a lot. Dumba and high picks or something, something like that. You know Dumba Greenway, whoever. Uh, Matt Boldy, whew, that'd be an expensive trade, but. He's, he's your top center. And God willing, he'll stay healthy. <laughs> Please, would be the most important thing there. So let's look at the prospects now a bit. And I was corrected by Derek Felska last week. And thank you again, Derek Felska, always rounding up the questions and providing questions from himself as well. Really appreciate that. He was giving me an FYI, uh, FYI off the mic, so to speak, that Ivan Ladnia actually left the KHL. He's back in Iowa, and that's why the numbers weren't weren't moving anymore. And it's like, I should have figured that. And it, But in, you know how I am sometimes. I'm just like, oh, I guess nothing's happening. Hmm. You know, so my apologies for that. He might be hurt, but he returned to North America and waiting for, for that season. Yep, the AHL. And knowing Ivan Lodnia, yeah, that's why I was suspicious about him being hurt. It seemed like he has off and on shoulder issues. Kind of reminding me a bit of, uh, what the heck was that guy's name now? <laughs> I'm blanking on his name. It is uh, the Goose. I always called him the Goose. That would be that's quite a while ago. Gustav Olofsson. Always having shoulder issues, it seemed like. That's who he was kind of reminding me of, and I was thinking his chances of getting to the NHL, not so great. He didn't translate to the AHL, so how is he going to translate to the NHL? And of course, he wasn't translating to the KHL either. Only, what, seven points and 27 games. I mean, at least he got some points, where previously in six games of Iowa, nothing. Kind of like a lot of the... Uh, great Iowa players coming to Minnesota for five or six games and getting zero points. That was the, the frustrating side of that. I'm using elite prospects a bit as well because I've been using <clears throat> excuse me, HockeyDB.com and I still will use it, but occasionally with players like Alexander Hovanov, you're actually going to get more statistics. For some bleeping reason, they weren't covering the they don't they don't have they don't capture the statistics for the uh you could call it the minor league affiliate of the KHL which is where Hovenov is right now and he's actually dominating that which tells you he comes to the AH this tells you he's an AHL player right now he's not an NHL player so his you know demands and it's called the VHL by the way bars Kazan his demands to come to the uh, NHL or KHL are unwarranted. He was unproductive. Seven points, or seven games, excuse me, and, well, didn't do anything. He didn't He didn't provide any points. He even didn't get along with the coach. Frustrating going on, and that's kind of been an issue with him thus far. There's AK Bar Kazan, and then there's just Bars Kazan. So it's like the minor league affiliate for the uh, KHL version of that team. 23 points, seven goals. He's got a lot of penalty minutes, too. So obviously kind of a little bit crazy. He's a plus seven. You gotta think he's the top line center for that club, or at least I would freaking hope so. We'll just say top six, I guess. <laughs> I would hope so. But for some reason, the VHL doesn't show up in Hockey Database. They must just not have that uh, attached to the page. That's just kind of how that goes, unfortunately. But So I apologize that I didn't capture those statistics on the last couple episodes. And, well, understandably getting sent down. I didn't even, you know, I didn't, let's just say I didn't know a whole lot about the VH, VHL coming in the last couple of years. So I, I apologize for that. That's just uh, my bad. And... <laughs> Just got to be honest with you, being transparent. <clears throat> Derek also was saying he believes Lodnia has an out clause and that Manel, and does not believe Manel does, but not 100% sure about that. Yeah, um, boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm 
It would suck to lose Manel. Luckily, we still have his rights, as Mr. Bill Guerin continues to say, or he likes to be called Billy Guerin, but uh, he likes to say that uh, we still have his rights, and I'd love to have him back. And But I think Manel and his agent are like, okay, well, where's the opening here? Is there a job? You know, a lot of people get frustrated when they want to move up in their job, and there's just no opening. There's only a couple of positions, that type of thing, and that's kind of what's happening at the right shot position. Uh, luckily for Dumba, he's not injured. Somebody's going to get traded because you still got, you know, Kalen Addison, guys like that. Nice start to his AHL career as the Iowa Wild finally started. We talk about them briefly here. A couple of games starting out. A absolute uh, a decent start to the game versus the Texas Stars. The Wild end up getting crushed 8-4. to four. I don't know what the heck happened to Hunter Jones. That was kind of sad and frustrating, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes that's how things go, unfortunately. thought I had this loaded up. I apologize. But yeah, Kalen Addison, getting things going. Three points. They've actually played three games already. My apologies. Three assists already for Kalen Addison. So he's AHL ready. That's a good thing. Hopefully we're not going to be sending him back to the WHL again. I think he's I think he's at a point now. I mean, he's, he's over a point a game. He's like a Brent Burns level of talent in the AHL, or WHL, pardon me. And, well, he's off to a great start in the AHL. He's played in a total of six games. If we go back to the, the Pittsburgh AHL club, the, the Scranton Penguins, wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins, two points there. So he's got five points in six total games in the AHL. He's he's ready for the AHL at the very least. And somebody's going to get traded. Kalen Addison, Brennan Mennel, both very capable of dominating professional hockey. I mean, they're both right shots. So some, somebody's got to go. It, it's got to be that. Either you use one of them in a trade, or you use Matt Dumba in a trade. Can't trade Spurgeon. He's the captain. He's got a huge contract. I mean, you can trade anybody, but still. And I do believe Louis Belpedio also should at least be a uh, third-pairing defenseman. Addison and or Menel probably shouldn't be third-pairing. Like, maybe Menel to start things out. I don't know. Addison's obviously a higher-touted guy, considering he was a, what, a second-round pick, 53rd overall. He's playing more like a first-round pick, though. It looks like an awesome find for uh, Bill, Billy Guerin's club there in Pittsburgh when he was the uh, uh, assistant GM. <sighs> Definitely strong start, though. Again, Iowa. They're, you know, they obviously have been up and down. Generally, though, a very talented group of players. Just that 8-4 to four game was really disappointing, I'd have to say. It's exciting, though, that we can see all these young players <laughs> because they're not on their junior clubs at the moment. So they're getting a shot at the AHL, and nice that we're able to do that. Hunter Jones giving up a ton of goals, though, in his first game. Again, good start to his career in the first, in the opening periods. And in the third period, it was just, <clears throat> the dams just exploded. He gave up seven goals in the game. Ugh, goals against average of 7.05. And yes, they lost. Yes, they lost. Uh, too many shots given up as well, though. Seven, seven uh, 37 saves in the game. He faced way too many shots, as you can tell. Save percentage of 84%. For the six foot four hundred Jones, hi, <clears throat> <Aye, aye, aye. laughs> It's too bad. Uh, definitely a shame. Uh, B- Derek Biarbo has been the starting goalie for the Iowa Wild thus far. Since then, we'll probably look at Iowa specifically right now and come back to the other prospects here. Gabriel Dumont, again a career minor leaguer, leading the club in scoring, but tied with Connor Dewar. Connor Dewar, twenty-one year old prospect for Minnesota, taken in the third round. In 2018, might be another find by Paul Fenton. Slow start to his AHL career last season, but he got things going as the year progressed. One up with 19 points, 52 games, but so far, four points for Iowa. Two goals, two assists, and only three games. Dmitry Sokolov taking some steps forward as well. Three points, two of them goals. Again, Addison, three assists. So, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to see these guys get going. Adam Beckman scored a goal in his first AHL game, and since then, nothing going. But exciting to see him rolling already. At the tender age of 19, 19 years of age for Adam Beckman. Some extremely young guys. Louis Belpedio has an assist. Damien Giroux, who a lot of people like as well, he also has an assist. Mitch McLean, Hunter Jones, yep. Oh, man, Hunter Jones, poor guy. Uh, those are the main. And Sean Boudrias is in the AHL now, so he's up from the juniors. Uh, we retained his rights while well, we signed him as a free agent. We, we kind of let him go and then brought him back. So that's nice. Boudrias, AHL. Instead of uh, instead of in the junior, so he's still with our organization now since we signed him as a free agent. 
Damon Hunt getting things going at 18 years of age. Ryan O'Rourke, 18 years of age, minus three so far. Unfortunately, was out there for that floodgate game, unfortunately for him, giving up a, a decent amount of calls there. Derek Bierbo with a tie and a win so far. Gola gives the average just under one. Good job. Save percentage over 92 uh, for him in two games thus far. Good start for Derek Bierbo. Uh, good for him. Beribo, pardon me. Getting things rolling there. Brandon DeHaim, three goal or three games, nothing scoring yet. We'll see if he can get things going the next couple of days moving forward for Iowa. But at least we can keep up with the Iowa Wild and Connor DeWeer at only 21 years of age. One of the younger players on the team leading the club with Gabriel vet, with veteran Gabriel Dumont. Dumont. <laughs> you can just you can just hear the French accent in that name, Gabriel Dumont, <laughs> leading the club in scoring. Six penalty minutes for him, too. He's second on the team there with Joseph Cramarosa. Good luck there with those guys. Kim, come on, get Louis Belpedio to the to the third, to third pairing. I don't know. I guess we love Brad Hunt, and he's the coolest guy ever, just like uh, um, Nate Prosser was before. He was able to score a goal recently with Philadelphia. Pretty cool to see what he was able to accomplish. Happy for him. Very happy for <laughs> Mr. Nate Prosser getting things rolling for Philly. Helping out his buddy there, Chuck Fletcher. A very promising team. And again, I love their black uh, uniforms. Unfortunately, Sebastian Barton locally was, uh, as usual, I, I'm not impressed. Yeah, that's Sebastian Barton. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. For some really strange reason, I, I don't know. Some, It can't be right, can it? can't be right. But uh, for some really strange reason, Elite Prospects wasn't showing the KHL numbers for Kuznetinov. So, what do you do? <laughs> you go to you go back to Hockey Database. That's how you go. So, um, from now on, I'll probably have both of these open, particularly for that VHL uh, league there. Quite important. Quite important. Quite important. Mason Shaw, did he even get any games? I, I didn't see his name. He's not been playing. Is he still recovering from AH, uh, a ACL, or what's the deal with him? Or another injury? Oh, Mason, come on, stay healthy, man. Please. Jacob Golden, I don't think they got things started yet. Nope, Erie Otters, OHL, I didn't think so. Unless he's playing overseas. I might as well give that a check, just in case. Because you know how that can go. And now, he's vanished up the face of the earth. So I'll read about that. Oh, there he is. I was going to say... I'm just curious, because some of these guys might go overseas a bit, so they can get some ice time. Sure, nope, that's the Erie Otters. And, hmm, McGill University, huh? But no numbers so far for Jacob Golden. I was curious, some of those, uh, you know, those junior prospects, sometimes they might move around so they can get some ice time, you know, otherwise just rotting at home or just skating around on a rink, you know, practicing forever, hoping to finally start freaking playing. Or Rossi can't even do that. That's just really unfortunate, man. Extremely unfortunate. Lodney, I didn't see his name either playing for the AHL. I didn't see him out there. Yeah, he's on the Iowa Wild, but didn't play, so maybe he is hurt, or they're just... I don't know what to say about Lodney. It seems like it's just... hes, he's There's always something. Damn it. Come on, Lodney. Let's go. Bryce Misley of <laughs> the University of Vermont. Oh, eight games, one assist, and I do think he's hurt or he's been scratched, that type of thing. He's not been playing one way or another. It's a crying shame. Legendary, yeah, you could call him legendary now. Legendary member of the Duluth Bulldogs, <laughs> two-time national champ, might have even won it last year. He's a senior, one of the leaders of the club, over a point a game, twenty-three points in nineteen games, nine of them goals. Nick Sweeney, one of the clutch players for Duluth Bulldogs, <laughs> and from Lakeville, Minnesota, where Neil Natok Thiesing uh, hailed from, <sighs> not too long ago. Uh, Sam Henches. Junior year, he's he's been picking up the numbers a bit. He's been picking up a late, and happy for him, just uh, happy for him to pick up some of that. Uh, Thirteen points so far, seven of them goals for the St. Cloud State Huskies. Again, they've been moving up. We'll look a bit at how uh, Minnesota Wild MNW prospects Pavel Bennett getting the uh, the whole thing together here, as we like to have our weekly uh, <clears throat> our weekly prospect type of deal. Jack McBain ended up. Uh, yeah, Jack McBain, I think he got it. Now I'm blanking. Was it McBain or Menel? Renan Menel, 
or no, DeWeer. DeWeer was awesome. Yeah, good start to his, uh, his run in uh, Iowa, getting the three points, and now he's at four, ultimately. Uh, Menel, four more assists. Oh, my goodness. He's just dominating in three games. And Jack McBain, five points in three games. I went with Jack McBain personally for Boston College. We'll come back to him in a second. And just picking it up. I was going to look at Menel also. But, yeah, Jack McBain greatly picking things up again. As he's looking more and more like... Uh, yep. he, he obviously moved up with the Boston College rankings. He's now almost a point a game. As he was well below that in his... Uh, Freshman and sophomore year is about half a point a game. Now he's just about there. Four goals, ten assists, and 14 games after that five-point weekend. Yeah, he's been awesome of late. Five points, uh, three games anyway. Three-game stretch. He has been absolutely spectacular. Jack McBain becoming one of the top centers there for uh, Boston College. And they're, again, number one in the country. Philip Lindbergh, that's my guy. Just continues to play well. Uh, didn't get any action, though, looks like last week. Only six games played again. Started the season out bad. Unfortunately, just one yucky weekend. Then they didn't play him again forever. He got in back-to-back -back weekends and was flat-out dominant. A couple of shutouts and one goal given up. Basically dropped his goals against average well below his uh, first two years with UMass Amherst. Again, I oh, love Philip Lindbergh. He's got a nice future. Nestorenko of Boston College. One of the best players on that team already. 14 points in 15 games as a freshman. He's right there with Jack McBain already. And he's another center, so... Pretty damn cool to see the production there of those guys. They're just dominating. Marshall Warren stuck at six points. Didn't get anything last weekend. Still only 19 years old. First of 11 points. Over a point a game for the University of Connecticut. Three goals. Eight assists in only 10 games. Really playing well. Left shot, left winger. Matthew Bullity, one of the top prospects in the entire system. He's at 14 points in 13 games. Missed a couple games, unfortunately, recently. Uh, but over a point a game for Boston College now as a sophomore. Is he ready for the AHL at the end of the season? We'll see. We'll see. I'm sure he could be productive in the AHL. Beckman, like I said earlier, he's obviously not in college or anything like that. One goal in the AHL. Matt Viguskov, two games in the KHL. He must be in the, uh, yeah, I think so, he must be in the VHL as well. We'll go backtrack with that one in a second. I'm kind of bouncing everywhere at the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> There's just all kinds of uh, changes, and you got to move around to get the actual numbers here. I'm guessing he's in the no, he's in the MHL right now. Hmm, because they weren't showing that MHL. Wow, pretty productive, but again, that's more of a minor league, uh, Russian league, right there. Just like the VHL, he played one game in the VHL, two games in the KHL, no points for either league. Fourteen in the MHL. Maybe that's the ECHL for for Russia. Maybe. 10 points, 14 games, 5 goals, 5 assists. Evening things out there for Matt V. Guskov. <laughs> yeah, that's the interesting part. So, they, yeah, it looks like Elite Prospects is a little bit deeper with uh, the Russian leagues where Taki Database just kind of sticks to the uh, the main one, the KHL there, apparently. Philip Johansson, obviously finished defenseman, stuck at 10 points now in 34 games. Looks like that's about where he's going to sit this year. Maybe he'll squeeze in one more point here at the last second. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, and, gosh, Simon Johansson still only four points. That's frustrating. So that's how that goes. He's not been doing a whole lot in the Swedish League, but 37 games. He's been playing, just not producing in the points at the moment, unfortunately. Trying to make sure. And, yeah, Kuznadinov. He's now been in 12 games in the KHL, so he's remaining in the KHL, but stuck at two points. Actually, I believe he got his second assist recently. So not really producing in the points, but he's at least been out there. And, you know, he's, he's a factor in his own way. He does a lot of stuff that's like, you know, doesn't get captured in the box score, that kind of thing. Obviously, good, strong defensive player, great skater, and he can be a threat. Speaking of threats, wrapping things up with Brennan Mantle, he's just been spectacular for men's Dynamo in the KHL. 34 points. Five, five goals, 29 assists. He's a plus eight on the year. He's even got 54 penalty minutes. That's funny. So he's definitely adding that physicality. That's his uh, highest penalty minute total thus far in his young career. 23 years old so far. Brendan Mantle, Woodbury, Minnesota. Oh, I hope he gets a chance in the NHL. I really do. It's especially with the Minnesota Wilds. Because he's going to emerge with somebody at some point. It's going to happen. If he doesn't come here, he'll wind up with another team and Another NHL team, and I have a feeling we're going to be like, oh, we should have we given him a shot. We should have got him going, but 
Well, hopefully he can produce when he does get a shot, and then we keep him around. With that said, that should be it for the prospects. I've pretty much covered everything I can get to at this point. Obviously, people that are a bit older might not have. Uh, yeah, they're probably not really in the in the. <laughs> They're probably not really in the Wilds' plans anymore, obviously. Most of the time, they're on another team already. ECHL, AHL, this and that. And Jack Sadick looks like he's uh, on a different ECHL team. That's unfortunate. Uh, at least he's playing kind of pro hockey in the ECHL. That's, again, hockey's uh, purgatory in a lot of ways. Like they say, that's where prospects go to die <laughs> at the end of the day, unfortunately. With that said, I'll now shut my mouth, and we will come back for fan interaction. back here on Brave the Wild, segment number two. Time to look at fan interaction. So it's only segment two, of course. Derek Felska getting things going. At Brave the Wild. At Brave the Wild is the Twitter account. And then you put hashtag BTWMN just so I can be able to capture all the questions and comments. Always appreciate this so very much. Derek Felska from, again, Western Wisconsin. Getting things started here. Obviously from Minnesota, but working in Western Wisconsin as a teacher. Says, uh, got a Minnesota Wild question on your mind? Ask Brave the Wild. Tag your question. Hashtag BGWMN. And ask as many questions as you'd like. Please retweet. Yeah, well, thank you. Why, yep. Soda Pod and all those guys getting things going. Thank you, Isha and Soda Pod and guys like that. Wild Brazuka and Belly Rubs for Pups. <laughs> I like that one. Ty stands up. No, that's an old one. Wish this could be in chronological order, but it refuses to be lately. I'll get caught up here very shortly. Yeah, that's really a shame. So, thought this thing would be ready. Here we go. Ty Sandstrom. Look at the thing started there. Okay, so Ty Sandstrom says, Who's the next, or what's next for Miko Koivu? Do you ever see him taking on a role with the Wild Scouting? In Finland, perhaps. And yes, this is also something I didn't talk about in the first segment. It was more heavy with the prospects in the uh, current state of the wild, this and that. Uh, Miko Koivu ended up giving up with the... Uh, he ended up saying, I, that, I don't know if I can play anymore, that kind of thing, with the uh, um, Columbus Blue Jackets. Seven games. He had a goal and an assist. And, you know, probably was frustrated, this and that, but they were very kind to him and understanding of the situation there. And he actually went to Columbus. It's uh, the uh, gen- general managers there. Uh, is finished, so that's one of those type of things that helps, so they knew each other well and worked together, so that's the situation with Miko Cuevo, he did announce his retirement will the Minnesota Wild retire the number? we'll see, uh, they probably should but we'll see, just because of his longevity, this and that, but was he the best player in Wild history? no, no um, but what's next, yeah, I, I hope he could work with the Wild, I, I hope he could yeah, maybe even be an assistant coach or something but obviously possibly a scout of some sorts somewhere in the front office. Maybe he's more of a front office guy. He doesn't really want to be down there, and I don't blame him either way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he's somebody you'd want on the power play where he could be, he could be a face-off coach. Yeah, so he could teach you how to do face-offs, right? And <laughs> well, like a penalty kill kind of guy too, a penalty kill coach. Not power play, but penalty kill. Even though he saw probably way too much time on the power play due to the fact he could actually win face-offs where other guys couldn't, couldn't do a, a whole lot after that, though he had a fantastic backhand. Did Miko Koivu. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, Ty. Uh, we'll see what happens. I hope I hope he comes back to Minnesota. I don't think there was any real hard feelings. I'm, I'm not sure. And, well, and a lot of people are saying, well, like, Bill Guerin was right. He was kind of at the end of his rope. He, he just, you know, sometimes it's just time to hang it up. And that's how it goes. Derek Felska again saying, got a question and asking people to retweet. Thank you so much for that. And Derek now jumping in, saying, a little Minnesota high school hawk, if you don't mind. I do mind. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Class A. Oh, God. Hermantown. Class A. Power. Hermantown defeated Class AA Duluth East 5-1 to one on Tuesday. Is it time for Hermantown to finally move to Class AA or AA? Yes. Yes, because Hermantown, I mean, who could you compare them to? I mean... I'm trying to think about them in college, like college something. I guess in women's college, that'd be like Tennessee or Connecticut. Like, every year, final, 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 final. Hermantown is Class A, Class AA, even though it's a small town. Um, 
Wow, Duluth East, no, they're, that, that's legit. I mean, how many times have we heard about Duluth East? And no, I don't mind about high school hockey. I don't follow it as closely, but I know who Hermantown is. I know who Duluth East is, you know, and obviously Eden Prairie, places like that, and Edina, of course. Don't, don't hate me out there, but I like the Edina Hornets, yes. Yes, I do. A lot of people might hate me for that. I like their, I like the North Star colors that they have. I like their coach, uh, you know, and uh, I just, for whatever reason, I like Edina for some reason. <laughs> so people hate me. Speaking of Class AA dynasties, Hermantown versus Edina. What do you think of that, Derek? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Hermantown versus Edina in the championship. I would cheer for Hermantown for that reason. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get kind of an underdog, smaller school. I would cheer for Hermantown, so I'm not a thousand percent Edina um, in that situation. Here we go. Derek Felska, this is when things can get real interesting because, uh, well, the the two of us, we understand Koivu's value to the organization historically. We don't understand the ultra the ultra praise all the time, necessarily. We don't see him as, like, this franchise player. He really wasn't. He wasn't a franchise player. And we're just being honest with you. We don't hate him, but he's he's not a franchise player. You know, Derek says, uh, Miko Koivu, well, maybe I shouldn't speak for Derek, but he let's see how he says, Miko Koivu retires after having played just seven games with the Blue Jackets. What do you think convinced him to finally retire the Axe? Why are so many Wild fans obsessed over him? Yeah, I agree. Uh, should the Wild sign him for one day so he can retire as a Wild player or not? I say yes. Yes. I, I'm a, I'm in favor of that. Why are they assess, obsessed with him? That's Minnesota. Just like, you know, Kevin Garnett. Obviously was a really good player for the Timberwolves. He's the best player in franchise history, and you'll hear about that till the cows come home. And the Wolves have always sucked, and blah, 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 blah. But Garnett was like the god of all time for the, the Wolves. But the fans worship him like he was better than Michael Jordan almost. I mean, it's too much. Like, he's untouchable. And Garnett had many flaws. So I, I kind of feel the same way. Koivu and Garnett in a lot of ways. And obviously Koivu's not in the same level in the NHL that Garnett was in the NBA. I, I get that as well. But it's it's a Minnesota thing, I swear. Like, certain guys, you just can't say anything bad about them without getting a ton of backlash and called salty and b bitter old man or whatever the hell people want to call me or someone else. So I, I agree. I, people are obsessed over him. He had value. He was wonderful on the penalty kill. He had a nice backhand shot that worked once in a while on the uh, on the, <laughs> on the on the shootout, because generally speaking, the Wild have struggled in the shootouts. It's just nice that now we're putting the right players out there in OT, so we don't need to go to the shootout in the first place, or get crushed and beaten in the first 30 seconds because we're too damn slow. That's the other reason. So it's nice that we're not getting as many overtime losses. We're getting overtime wins now. Uh, that's where I don't miss Koivu at all. Putting, in, putting Miko Koivu out there in a 3-on-3 three -three is suicide. <laughs> putting Ryan Suter out there and Parisi. It's like, it's suicide. What are you doing? And that's what guys like Boudreaux and uh, Mike Yo would do in the past. What were you thinking? It's like, of course we lost. They're too slow. Even when some of them were closer to their prime, they still weren't very fast. There's there, you know, you got to have fast, some faster players and thank God the Wild do now with the Fialas and then even Julie Erickson Eck and Greenway, guys like that. You're better off going with the young guys in those situations. Um... So, yes, I went a little long with that one, but hey, there's always, Derek asked really good questions, and well, it's Miko Koivu. You know, it's Miko Koivu. He's, you know, the longest tenured player with the Wild. He he's, he is Minnesota, that kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of Finnish community in Minnesota. There's even a huge stone in Theodore Worth Park. Very close to, it's close to Penn Avenue, but not quite there yet. But Theodore Worth Park on Glenwood area, uh, on the, we'll call it the eastern side of Worth Lake. There's a huge stone there where it talks about the Finnish community. And the stone's been there since the late 30s. So there is a... <laughs> there definitely is a Minnesota side to, to Finland. And uh, there's definitely a Finland side to Minnesota. So Koivu, Finland, and all that. It's, it's you know, I, I respect that very much. I think it's really cool. And I'd love to see him come back here long term and make Minnesota home, that type of thing, once again, and for, for, many, for many years to come. Hopefully that works out again, but at the same time, is he like the god of the wild? No, he's not. Absolutely not. And of course, <laughs> you know, you don't want to overrate the Kirill Kaprizovs or the Marco Rossis either. Just let them go out and play and pray to God they stay healthy and wish them the best. Wish them the best. Be excited about their future, but don't worship them. None of them are gods at the end of the day. We'll continue now with, uh, with Derek. Uh, Iowa went 1-1-1 one, one, one in their first weekend against the Texas Stars. 
Hunter Jones gave up seven goals in his debut. Should that be a big concern for the Wild or not? Dmitry Sok- Sokolov has been a point per game so far. Should he be back on the Wild's radar? I think yes to both. Uh, you know, no, for Hunter Jones, I think it's one of those, you know, re- super young goalie syndrome, that type of thing. I mean, a lot of young goalies come out and get their butts kicked early on. It's exciting when a young goalie does well at the beginning, but there's always going to be a bad game or two coming up. It just always does. Uh, Kapokakinen started out phenomenal with Iowa, and then he struggled mightily later on during that season, and then he got strong later. Hunter Jones is extremely young, so there's definitely something going, I think, still with him. If he does if he does it again in the next year or two, you know, he has games like that in the next year or two in the AHL or whatever, then yes, it's definitely a time for concern. It, it's a concern, but I think, like, not major. It, it, it was disappointing, very. Stokolov should be on the Wilds' radar, I think. It sounds like he's in the best shape he's ever been in, and he's, he's realizing, hey, you know, this is my chance. It's time to get moving. You know, and the, the, the window's closing. Sokolov, uh, as Michael Russo uh, last year pretty much wrote him off as a prospect. Like, he's really not on the Wilds' radar anymore. He's not really, you know, he doesn't really consider him a prospect anymore, does uh, Michael Russo. Jay Bushy <clears throat> jumps in and says, do you think Tuesday is a realistic day for the Minnesota Wild to start playing again? <sighs> I hope so. It's It's been a few weeks already. I hope so. I hope so. Some certain guys will probably still be out. Luckily, it's only Thursday that I'm recording right now, so you got five more days to recover. Certain players will probably be back and ready to go. i got to thank Felino, the one who got kind of it all started with. We'll get going again. And hopefully some of the others that aren't as systematic and all that. And I guess it's just... I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, because that, that, that's a long stretch. It shouldn't be too much longer, I got to think. People do recover. They get better, this type of thing. And it's not like the whole team feels like a truck hit them. It's a couple of certain players. Like, guys like that will not be playing probably next Tuesday. Certain players will be out and some will be in. So maybe we'll have two or three guys out and we'll give uh, the taxi squad players a shot. As long as they don't get sick, too. Uh, thank you, Jay, for that. Uh, continue if there's more. Okay, here's one. Uh, Derek Velska sharing one from the the dog father. That that's belly rubs for pups. What's the breaking point for the league when it comes to postponing games? Do you see them just going by win percentage, come playoff determination? Also, what happens when playoff games are postponed? I think they'd still play that. If it got to the postseason, they'd still play them. They'd still play them even if they had to wait like a week or something. Those would still happen. There's, I, I think, there's no chance if it actually gets to the postseason that they would just stop. There's no chance. Um, playoff games are just too valuable, and it's not the end of the world if a playoff game gets postponed because you're still going to play the same team, and, well, somebody's going to get eliminated, so that's one less team to worry about long-term as well. I think this is a temporary thing that's happening right now, and they'll get it figured out. That's just my belief. I have faith that they'll get it figured out. Uh, they did such a good job with the bubble back last in the uh, last late summer and early fall that. I, I have faith that things will get figured out here. The biggest problem is the testing. How the testing happens in the morning and the results come the next day. They get sent to New Jersey and have them done the next day. They have to have the testing done earlier and more efficiently, I think. Then that'll that'll fix things up. You won't have an outbreak. Like a guy, a guy or two will be out because they test positive. And that's it. It won't be like, oh, he was positive. Oh, crap. Now all these other guys are affected. Great. So I don't think... Uh, I think they're going to improve on something. I, I'm surprised they actually went that direction. It's stunning, to be quite honest. I, I, I do have faith, though. I'm just going to say that at this moment. Tom Hayen says, is there a Minnesota wild season anymore? I, I think so. And thank you, Tom Hayen, for sharing the... Uh, it looks like it's a, it, it's a quote to eat. Thank you very much, Tom, for retweeting the most recent one, Sickness and Injuries Plague the Wild, episode 248. Thank you so much, Tom Hayen, for that. Always appreciate it. And he did it uh, on the 28th also. Thank you so much. Looks like that's everything for fan interaction. Thank you guys very much. Yep. Even, if, even if it's a few questions, they were really good questions, and they were great. You know, they, they provided, they added to the show, they provided conversation, this and that, and we got to talk about Miku Koivu, of course, wishing him the best moving forward. I hope he comes back and uh, comes back to the organization. And I do think they, should, they will sign him for uh, one day and retire with the Wild. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all, because he only played seven games with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He, he got a goal and assist. He contributed a little bit, 
for the other team. Won a few face-offs, I'm sure, but was stuck in the bottom six, as expected, unfortunately, at his age. And, of course, I'm sure that knee injury really kind of derailed uh, de derailed what was left of his career, and that's unfortunate. Maybe took a year or two off of, of it at the end of the day. <laughs> or three. Who, who knows? But, <clears throat> again, wishing him the best. Hope he does come back to the organization, so to speak, to help with uh, development or who knows, you know, scouting, this and that, or even coaching behind the scenes, that type of thing. With that said, please do join the show, like you were saying with Derek Belska there as he was sharing it. Hashtag BTWMN, and then we can get you on air. Also, another way to get on is via uh, audio submission. Simply use the free voice recording application on any device on the planet. Open it, click, click record, treat it like a phone call, hit stop, Share it slash email it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Always appreciated for that. Will be great to have you on. You would lead off the fan interaction segment. Don't be shy. There's no reason to be shy. I mean, I'm, I'm not anybody that's going to scare anybody. I'm not going to laugh at anybody. And there's no reason to laugh. It's, it's hockey conversation. Unless you want to laugh. You want to joke. There's that too. As long as you keep it relatively hockey related, that'd be great. Um... If you want to talk about uh, the, the coffee hour for the next hour and a half, that, that's okay, I guess. No, I'm kidding. Maybe not an hour and a half. How about five minutes? The the coffee hour. That's what I have right now. Starbucks French roast at this stage. Yeah, have you heard that? <clears throat> you know, I have different, many different varieties, varieties of coffee. I don't stick with one brand or anything like that. Pete's French roast, awesome. Oh, Pete's is good. That's from California. Really good. Uh, Starbucks Thanksgiving blend. Holy cow, that's a good one. Um, Caribou Lakeshore. Caribou French Roast. You get the idea. There's my coffee hour. It lasted about a minute and a half. So uh, check those out, I guess. Free plugs for those different coffee brands. I'm sure Starbucks really needed my help, but <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> With that said, uh, please write a positive rating, if you could, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Apparently you can do that. And I guess Audible you can as well. You can, you can rate the show if you listen on Audible also. That's out there. So Audible is the other application. So now I know of three applications. You can write uh, reviews to the shows. Like Brave the Wild in general. Not specific episodes, but Brave the Wild in general. If you're talking about a specific episode in the review, you probably go, oh, yeah, then there it is. That's, that's how you'd review a certain episode for whatever reason. Like, what the heck was that? Or it was the greatest episode ever? Or thanks for the shout-out, whatever the heck it is. Speaking of shout-outs, I better get to that. I've rudely not mentioned anybody hardly. Uh, Derek Felsk, of course, I did mention. Crease and assist. Check that out on the Sports Daily. MNW Prospects, Pavel Bonnet. Brandon Quas, Justin Backy, some of the greatest guys out there. Thank you, Justin, for the shout-out on Sound the Foghorn recently. Always appreciate that. Um, Minnesota Wild Global. Minnesota Wild Nation, Patrick Turner out there as well. Patrick Turner, Minnesota Wild Nation, and again, like Minnesota Wild Global, Scott Cavendish, Chad Walski, Kathy Main, Chance Costick, David Costick. Thank you always. And of course, all the names that have been come up here, the Dave Johnsons on Twitter, uh, Jay Bushy, Tom Hayen, thank you so much. Can't wait to hear some more and from more and more uh, from you out there. Teresa Ferries, all of you out there. Thank you for the interaction and uh, help, uh, letting me be a part of the hockey community. It's a wonderful thing. Minnesota hockey community. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. We're not everybody's best friends out there, but at least at least there are some really good people out there, and I can't thank you guys enough for uh, well making this more enjoyable, making the show more enjoyable to do, and keeping up with the wild. And of course, I do write for Gone Puck Wild. I better get to that too. Lake Martin, the uh, the site expert there. Really appreciate him. Um, Gone Puck Wild. Can't wait to can't wait to get going on that again. I've been been in and out with this and that work schedule podcasting this and that with that said hope all of you have a good week and hopefully the minnesota wilds start playing again and even if they don't we'll keep up with the prospects we'll keep talking because there's always going to be news and with the prospect there's a lot to talk about there it actually could be a pretty long segment it was longer than normal today because there's a lot going on and well i can actually go a little bit longer because that's going to be more the dominant theme of the show until things get rolling again keeping up with iowa now and golden gopher hockey what was that last weekend? You got stomped by Wisconsin. Don't do it again. <laughs> Don't do it again. You, let's get things going again. Get back to that NCAA tournament and win the damn thing. With that said, I'll finally shut up. Wish you all a great week and talk to you next time. <laughs>